Yo, what's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, D. Lloyd, back with episode three of our Miami Dolphins owner mode series we have going on. Now, this right here, I just want to get right into it. This is the trade I ended up making. I said in the last episode that I really needed a new return man after I released Marcus Thickpin after that terrible game with the two back-to-back -back fumbles. So I went ahead and I got one. I traded the Denver Broncos, our fifth-round pick, and our seventh-round pick since we had two of both to the um, Denver Broncos for Trendon Holiday. He gives us some speed. We can have it back there. He's a nice, reliable return man. I'm not looking too much to have him on the offensive side of the ball, but just, just as a return man, he'll be pretty good. And right now I'm just showing a little bit of my cuts I made. Nobody of really any significance at all. Besides Marcus Thig Thigpen, I did end up cutting him after that um, return game. I just didn't really need you know, him at running back at that point. Since his um, ball security isn't that high anyway, he wasn't really going to get in the game. So I just went ahead and freed up that roster spot. But nobody really to a point that I did end up cutting. But for this, um, the third preseason game, we, did, we went ahead and played against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that you're about to see right here. And um, it was a pretty pretty good game. You see right here, this is the first play from scrimmage. And just look at Doug Martin right here go. He This man had a lot of space, as you see him with the stiff arm. And then he's going to go ahead and continue running all the way down to about the 44-yard line. That was a gain of 36 on the play. As our run defense looked kind of suspect, especially going against our, um, a good running back in Doug Martin. This is pretty much a, the best running back we played this preseason. You see Doug Martin again right here just breaking tackles, and he is going to take this to the end zone. And that's going to give the Tampa Bay Buccaneers a 7 nothing lead in the ball game off of only a two-play drive, which is <laughs> was not pretty bad for us. But we have our own pretty good running back. So we go ahead, we dump it off to Lamar Miller, who is um, now starting, if you notice. He's with the starting team, and he's going to take this all the way down. And he's going to get pushed out of bounds at about, say, the seven-yard line. But that was, again, a 74 yards. But we could not get in the end zone, however. And we have to settle for three points as we cannot punch it in as we try to hand the ball off three consecutive plays that did not work. So we, the Tampa Bay Bucks come out in the very next possession of the game. And look at Doug Martin go. He's going to stop. He's going to plant. He's going to run. And he's going to go all the way down to about the 50-yard line. That was another nice run. You see right there, three carries. That's all it needed for him to get over 100 yards. Right here, Josh Freeman, he says, why not? I want to get in some rushing yards, too. He's going to go. He's going to get 17 yards on that run. And that's going to put them in the red zone. And you see Freeman, he's going to drop back. But he's going to get sacked. And now that's going to force his third and nine. Freeman, he's looking, he's looking. He's going to throw the ball, and he's going to find his man, Vincent Jackson, in the on the sideline. It's going to set up a first and a goal from the six-yard line. But three plays later on third down, they hand it off to Doug Martin, and he's going to get in the end zone for another touchdown early in this ball game. And that's going to raise your Tampa Bay Buccaneers lead at this point to 14-3. to now you see Matt Moore and our second team's in the game. We're going to throw the ball deep on third and 12. He's going to find Michael Agnew, the backup tight end, who's been playing very good so far. But he gets hurt. He will not return for the rest of this ball game, but he will end up being okay. So nothing too bad. But we do, you see right here, miss the field goal. and We get nothing out of that deep ball. And the game is still 14-3 to in the second quarter. Now you see they're going to hand it off. And look at this man go. This is Peyton Hillis. And he's going to stiff arm a man. He's going to go down to about the 31-yard line. Off a nice run by Peyton Hillis. Now Webber, he's going to throw it deep. And he's going to find Saquon Underwood. And he's going to be wide open in the end zone. And they're going to extend the lead to 21-3 to now. As this is pretty much turning into another route. But this time in Miami. So this is not good for the home fans at all. You see, Mamo, he's dropping back. He's going to find his receiver, McNutt. He's going to catch the ball for a gain of eight. Now third and eight. We're trying to get the first down. He's going to find McNutt again. That's going to be a first down for the Dolphins and keep the drive alive. You see right here at this point, he has five completed passes in a row. This time he's going to throw it, and he's going to find McNutt again for the third time this possession. And that's going to put him inside the 20-yard line. Now third down once again and on this drive. We need another play. And he's going to find the new guy, Trendon Holiday, for a touchdown on the out route. He made his first presence known on the offensive side of the ball, which I said I wasn't going to play him too much on. But that was a nice out route by Trendon Holiday. He's going to cut the lead to 21 to 10. But they go right back to Peyton Hillis. And this man runs hard as a big boy. He goes down. He gets a first down. 
Now second and two, they're going to find his man, Doug Martin, on the out route. He's going to stay on his feet and go out of bounds. So now with 43 seconds left, they're trying to go ahead and score a touchdown before the half. And they're going to find his man, Douglas, right here. And he's going to do just that. As that is another touchdown for the Buccaneers. And they're going to go up 28-10 to 10 at this point in the game. But they decide to kick it off to Trendon Holiday. And it is a reason why I traded for this man. This man just has speed. As you see him bounce to the outside. And he has some speed to run. But he is going to get pushed out. After the back juke does not work, and he goes down about the 46-yard line. So we come down the next play, and we're going to find Matthews, and he's going to get laid out, but he's going to come down with the catch. We use the timeout. Now Matt Moore, he's looking. He's dropping. He's looking. He's going to try to throw the comeback route, but this is picked off by the cornerback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he has room to run. He's going to go all the way down to about the 15-yard line before getting brought down. But now the Bucks have 13 seconds to try to score a touchdown before halftime, and they do just that. They go right back to Tyquan Underwood, his second touchdown of the first half. Now in the second half, down 35-10, to 10, we're going to find this prayer throw right here to Dustin Keller. We just kind of threw it up, kind of panicked at that point, but we did get the catch. But now we're going to try to find him in the end zone, but it's going to be picked off the pass attended to McNutt. And that's going to be another interception. That's going to turn into this three points by the Buccaneers on the other end of the other end of the field. It's going to be 38 to 10. The third quarter winding down. At this point, we're just kind of playing. At this point, the lead, the comeback is kind of out the picture. But you see Matt Moore finding Trendon Holiday. He's going to show off a little bit of speed and get to about the 49 yard line. You see two catches for 40 yards at this point in the game. Now we're going to look back, and we're going to find Sims, the third-string tight end, who got his fourth catch right there. But then after getting laid out, he worked for that one. Now Matt Moore, he's going to drop. He's going to find who else? McNutt again. That's going to be his fourth catch up the middle of the field. They're going to keep going cover, too. We're going to hit him up the middle. But we once again, we cannot convert the touchdown. Now we are forced to settle for three points, and that's going to make this lead 38-13 to for the Buccaneers. Now they're going to go ahead and hand it off to the third string running back. I believe that's Brian Leonard. He's going to go get a nice gain, and they're going to give it right back to him. This time he's going to go and make it third and one, but they can't get anything done either, but they have to kick this long field goal. But that is in there, and that's pretty much the game. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers took this preseason game 41-13. to As we really just couldn't stop the run, we had troubles with the run game, and that's something that we pretty much need to patch up. But, however, our next ball game, we do go ahead and play against the New Orleans Saints. We're not really worried about this running game, but really nothing happened in the first quarter at all. So you see right here, it's just nothing but backups as we start off in the second quarter. But this time, they're going to get the slip screen to Pierre Thomas, and he's going to run for the first down. And now inside the red zone on second to four from the 10-yard line, they're going to hit the sweep to Pierre Thomas. He's going to beat everybody to the outside, and that's going to be a touchdown for the Saints, and they're going to go up 7 to nothing early in the second quarter. After we go three and out, you see McCown, he's going to drop back, and he's going to find Nick Toon, and he's going to go for a gain of six yards, now third and four. He's going to drop back once again. He's going to find his man on the out route in between coverage. A great catch by Chris Givens. Now McCown, he's looking again. This time he's going to find his tight end for the nice dump-off pass. And that's going to set up this third down right here. And you see him going right back to Nick Toon. He's going to force the fourth and three after he gets that catch. But now they are in field goal range, and they do convert. So your New Orleans Saints are up 10 to nothing in this ball game. With one minute left in the second quarter, we're trying to score before halftime. And he's going to find his man Matthews on the corner, on the corner route. And that's going to set up this first and 10 from about the 46-yard line. So what are we going to do on the next play? We're going to go ahead and we're going to throw the ball. We're going to try to do the same route again, but we get a completely different result. This is picked off, and he has a little bit of room to run. He's going to bring this into the Dolphin territory. But now everything has changed. Now the New Orleans Saints are trying to go down to score. They're going to find Chris Givens. He's going to get a first down. Right here, they're going to come back. They're going to get another first down. This time the dump off to Pierre Thomas up the middle of the field. 52 seconds left in the half. McCown, he's going to look. He's going to throw, but it's going to be picked off by Don Jones, the rookie cornerback 
from out of Arkansas saying, look at him. He has room to run and nobody's going to catch him. He's going to take the pick to the crib. And that's going to be the Dolphins' first touchdown of the ball game. And it's going to cut the deficit 7-10 to going into halftime. As he jumped that route, that was a great defense by the rookie Don Jones. He's trying to, you know, creep his way into the starting lineup a little bit, get some playing time. But in the second half, they're going to come back. And this is going to be Davis, the other rookie we have, but he cannot get his feet in, apparently. I'm looking at the replay. It looked like he got his feet into me, but, hey, the, the refs didn't see it, and they called it the incomplete pass. But we do end up getting the ball anyway. And you see Matt Moore going with the QB read, and he's going to run for, again, a 17 yardless. And that's going to be a first down. We're going to go right back to the read, and this time it's going to be Daniel Thomas. And the read, let me talk about the read for a second. The read really gave us some a little bit of life in this game as it opened some things up. And I really never thought about going, you know, QB read, anything like that with this team. But Matt Moore is able to run it pretty good. Um, Tannehill should be able to run it pretty good. I haven't really did anything too much with him. But he has 80 speed, so he should be able to run well with him. So I might incorporate a little bit more of the QB reads and QB options into our playbook and into our, um, our scheme a little bit. But now it's second and eight. Matt Moore, he's going to throw the ball deep in the end zone, but this is just a bad pass. I tried to throw it to the outside shoulder. It did not go to the outside shoulder at all. Then there's another interception in the end zone. So now the Saints are coming, but this is going to be a sack. And we're going to get the ball right back at about the 13-yard line. See the player celebrating right there off a nice play off the cornerback blitz. And now this is going to set up right here. This throw, he's going to find Michael Agnew. He's going to go down to about the four-yard line. It's going to be third and two. Now we need to convert. And we're going to find Dustin Keller who's going to catch this ball in traffic for Miami Dolphins touchdown. And that's going to give us the lead, the first lead of the ball game as we go up 14-10. to 10. In this game, we're two minutes left in the third quarter. He's going to find Pierre Thomas on this sweep, and he got laid out. Don Jones is all over the field in this game. Luke McCann's going to come. He's going to find Mark Ingram on the slip screen, and he's going to just rumble his way for a first down. That's going to keep the New Orleans Saints drive alive. Now into the fourth quarter, they're going to go ahead, and they're going to find his receiver on the low route on the sideline. He's going to catch the ball. Now third and 15. They need a nice game right here. But he's going to find Jelani Jenkins, the linebacker out of Miami. I mean, out of Florida, excuse me, for the interception. That, that was a terrible throw. We go right here. You see the play fake got that lineman bad. And we're going to find McNutt on the middle route for a nice game and the first down. Now we got five minutes left in the quarter. We're going to find Trendon Holiday. He's going to show his speed before we're just getting pushed down. And that's going to be a first down. But once again, our red zone offense has been terrible, and we are forced to settle for another field goal, which is going to give the New Orleans Saints a chance to tie the game up and force overtime. They're going to find Kenny Stills out of Oklahoma on that route. And that's going to be a first. And now third and 16, we just need to stop. And look how open Kenny Stills was. As he comes up big with the nice corner route, that's going to force the first down. And this time, another third down. But this time, they throw the check to Pierre Thomas, and that's going to be a first down once again. So now they have life, and they're going to throw it deep in the end zone, but it's going to be knocked down by Don Jones. A nice play as it looked like he had his man open. If they would have let him a little bit more, that would have been six. But now they're forcing third and three to make a play, and they do. So that's going to be another first down. That's been converted by the New Orleans Saints in this drive. And now they're going to throw it deep. And this is almost picked off, but they could not come down with the interception. He's going to force a third and seven, which we've been terrible on. And once again, another conversion. This one leads to six points as Chris Givens gets into the end zone. And that's going to tie this ball game up 17 all and force overtime. First play of overtime. We're going to try to go deep. We're going to launch it to McNutt, and he's not going to be able to come down with it as it is batted down by the safety. Now second and 10. We're going to throw, and it's going to be picked off by Jonathan Vilma, who played great coverage on that one, and they're going, to, they're going to get the ball in the Dolphin territory. All they need is three points. You see McCown throwing it, but it is picked off by Don Jones. I said he's been all over the field this game, and he is definitely working to try to get some playing time when the regular season starts next week. And that was a clutch interception by him. Now we're just going to pound the rock, hand it off to the to Thomas, he's going to get it. Now we're going to go right back 
But this time it was with the play action. And Matt Moore's going to look, and that was a terrible throw. He had a receiver, but he underthrew Trenton Holiday, and that's going to force the punt. Now the New Orleans Saints get the ball right back, and they have another chance, and they're going to find Higgins as he's going to run a nice corner route, and that's going to be a first down for the New Orleans Saints. Now trying to get past midfield into the Dolphin territory. You see McCown, he's going to throw it, and this was a terrible play call as it just ended up losing a lot of yards by Pierre Thomas on that, and a lot of yards, and that's going to force a punt. And now the Dolphins have a chance. So here we come down the field. We were trying to end this game. This game's been going on entirely too long. We're pounding the rock again, getting the first downs after first down. You see Matt Moore right here. He's going to get sacked, and that is going to force a long third and 19. And that we're going to end up having to punt the ball. So now the New Orleans Saints are trying to end this long game. They're going to dump it off to Pierre Thomas again. And you get a similar result. He does not get a yard. Now third down, they have to be forced to do something crazy. But they can't, and they have to punt the ball as well. Now two minutes left in the game. We don't want to tie. We need to go down and score, at least get a field goal. And you see Matt Moore going. He's going to run the ball, get a gain of nine, set up the second of one. As we go with the QB reading, like I said, it's been working a little bit. And as we get the first down on this one, about a gain of about 10 yards. Later in the drive, a second to ten. Look at this. We're going to find Dustin Keller up the middle of the field. No safety help. And that's going to set up this game winning field goal by Carpenter. And that's going to be your game. Miami Dolphins won 20-17 to 17 at home in the final preseason game. And they're going to finish with a preseason record of 2-2. Two and two, 500 record going into week one. And, I mean, like I said, we just need to patch up our defense a little bit. And Lamar Miller, he's he really he's the starter coming in the game. Don Jones, you will see him playing with the starters as he had a great game. I like using him a lot. But yeah, um, two and two record going into the regular season game, and that's going to be against the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. So I think they're going to start Brandon Whedon. I'm not really sure, but yeah, that's who, that's who we're going to play in this next episode. So please comment, like, subscribe. I'll see y'all when we we play the Cleveland Browns. Peace.